What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're talking about summertime night fishing. We're not necessarily talking about throwing black and blue worms or big spinner baits with Colorado blades. Today I got some tips and some tricks, some different baits for you guys to try this summertime. Summertime is a great time to get out on the water. It is hot out, so that's why today I'm talking to you guys about night fishing. You get out, there's less boat traffic, weather, it is nicer, it is tolerable to be out on the water when that sun goes down, and guess what? The fish eat too. You know, summertime you get a lot of boat traffic, you get a lot of commotion, a lot of, not an unnatural stuff on the water, and it does affect fishing. You guys know anytime you get an abundance of fishermen, an abundance of wave runners and wakeboard boats and tubers and kayakers, all that, it affects the fishing. The fish feel that boat traffic, they feel that pressure, and they shut down. Well, guess what? At nighttime, they feed. So today's video, I'm going to talk about some tips, uh, some tricks to help you guys catch more fish, to get out on the water, be safe, but to catch more fish and not necessarily just throwing a big spinner bait with a Colorado blade or a big 10 inch or 12 inch power worm. Got some different baits for you, some different things to think about to help you guys catch more fish when you're out on the water. So before I talk about baits, I'm gonna keep it real simple on baits. I got some top water baits, some subsurface baits, some, uh, some plastic worm baits. Uh, and I, I'll go through that later on this video, but first I want you guys to understand a little bit about summertime fishing and uh, we've done videos on it in the past but if you can I'm gonna back up if you're a guy that works a nine to five or you're a guy that works you know all weekend you can't get out go fishing whenever you get the opportunity I've been like that for years where I had to go out on certain times because my schedule didn't allow me to go out during the week or at night and such. So go out when you can. If you're a fisherman that has a heavy workload, a heavy work schedule, get out early in the morning if you can, get out late in the evening if you can, but whatever you do, make sure that you're fishing this summertime. The rest of us, the guys that can actually get out at night or choose your schedule or get days off when there's not a lot of people on the water, I want you to think about something and it will drastically improve not just the amount of fish you catch but the size and what I'm talking about is moon phase now outdoorsmen hunters fishermen we all understand how the moon affects the outdoors everything around us revolves around that now without getting too scientific on it I'm gonna kind of dummy it down a little bit and I want to uh, talk to you guys that, that have the opportunity to choose when you go fishing. Now, Matt, we've talked, Matt and I, we've talked about it for years. If you have the opportunity to choose when you go fishing, I want you to think about two different moon phases. We all think about the full moon, right? We all hear that fishing around the full moon can be epic, and it can. But I want you to think about the new moon too, because at this time of the year, a lot of the times of the year, the new moon is actually better than the full moon. So if you have the chance to make your schedule, your fishing schedule, I want you to focus on the three days before and after that new moon and full moon. So those 12 days in the entire month are the days that you should be out fishing. Now, if you can't, go out fishing with you can, when you can, but if you can, think about those those two six day periods because that is when you're going to have uh, the opportunity the best chance to catch the biggest fish in your lake now new moon and full moon now when do i what baits do i throw on each it's very easy if you are a clear water fishery if you are a high pressured fishery lots of visibility lots of boat traffic I want you guys to go out on the new moon. That is gonna be the darkest time of the entire month. When that moon is completely blacked out, you're talking pitch black, 
that is when those fish are going to be less finicky. They're going to be up shallow. They're going to be more apt to eat your bait, easier to trick them. Now on the flip side, if you guys have muddy or stained water um, and, and you don't get a lot of boat traffic or whatever, you can definitely go out during the full moon. It's going to be a little bit brighter. It's going to be like daytime out there. You're going to treat it just like the noon in the daytime. You're going to throw, well, I'll get into that. But if you have uh, stained water, go out on the full moon to add a little bit of visibility to help your fish find your bait. So understand that. New moon, clear water, full moon, dingy water. Keep it simple. So now that we got moon phase covered, let's talk about baits. Now, if you read the bass, the book on bass fishing, it would tell you to go out and throw a 10 inch Carolina rig or Texas rigged ribbon tail worm. And that works. I've caught a lot of fish on it. It works. But today's video is going to be a little bit more than that. Some different baits that I'm going to challenge you guys to get out of your comfort zone and go try and fish because you know what? It works. Matt and I, we've done it for years and we have confidence in these baits and these techniques. Now, when you're thinking about, if you guys have never done summertime fishing, night fishing, uh, most people will tell you go out and, with a full moon. And so I kind of already explained the moon, but if you guys are new to it, definitely go out on the new moon or on the full moon. That way you get comfortable in the dark because fishing in the dark when you can't see the shoreline, it is completely different. You, you lose your depth perception. Um, you kind of don't know where you're at. Don't know where you're at. So go out when it's still, that, that moon is high and bright enough that you can see that dock or you can see that tree so you're not hanging up and, and losing all of your baits. But once you get comfortable with your fishery, wherever you're at, the area you're fishing, definitely try and go back when it is even darker on that new moon. So let's talk about baits. So, Texas rig worms, yes, they work. Carolina rig worms, yes, they work, and they catch big fish. But more than finesse baits, more than bottom contact baits, I wanna talk about top water, I wanna talk about uh, you know, throwing a frog in the middle of the night, throwing bladed jigs, spinner baits, that sort of stuff. So let's dive down into the different types of baits, and I'll explain when I like to use each one and when they shine. Let's get these guys out of the way, because this is what 95% of the people do night fishing, you know, and and like I said night fishing It can be a great time to get on the water when there's not a lot of people on the water so Typically if you do see other bass fishermen on the water or bank fishing at night in the summertime They're usually throwing one of these three things either a Texas rig worm a jig or some kind of creature bait But most of them are on the bottom Again, I'm gonna show you, talk about some baits that I want you guys to try out. So let's talk about these three real quick. And as far as all of this, try and keep color very, very simple. You read the book on bass fishing, they'll tell you to throw a black and blue jig. Well, I don't necessarily do that. If you're in murky water, we already talked about murky and clear water when the moon is up, which moon, which moon phase to fish. If you have murky water, I will typically go with some kind of dark, black, blue, natural color. If it is bright, clear water, I like to throw bright colors. I know that doesn't make sense, but I want you to try it. You know, Matt and I have talked about it for years. Throwing a chartreuse crankbait in clear water at night is a phenomenal way to catch a lot of fish and big fish. But murky water, stay dark. Clear water, go bright. And that's going to apply to all these different co categories uh, that, I, that I cover. So, bottom contact bait. I always have one or two of these tied on. No matter if I plan to go out and I plan to throw top water all night, I will always have a bottom contact bait tied on because you know what? It works. There are days that I go out and throw a jig at night and I can't catch them on anything else but I will have 35 pounds in the boat on a jig. Or there's nights where I go out and I can't catch them on anything else, but I will catch them on a, on a worm. And usually, the same night, they won't eat both. So always have some kind of worm rigged on, always have some kind of jig or creature bait rigged on. And I, I can't tell you why, I can just tell you that it happens. I can't tell you why one night they will eat uh, a brush hog or a game hog and can't get bit on a jig. But other nights you can get bit on a jig with a beaver style trailer, but can't get, 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 can't get bit on the brush hog or a worm. I don't know 
I'm just telling you, always have at least two of these things rigged up. That way, when you can't catch them on the other ways, they're more than likely eating one of these two. So a jig, I always, I'm gonna go kind of quick through this stuff because it's kind of the basics. Uh, jig, I always go with some kind of uh, heavy wire jig. This actually has a no jack hook in it. And just like all, video, all videos, I'll link all these products down below in the video description. But I typically go with a natural color jig, dark jig in dark water, and I'll go with kind of a more natural color in that clear water. So my, my favorite colors to throw are some kind of craw pattern, some kind of like molting craw or go to. Again, I'll link all that stuff down below in the video description, but I typically don't change the color of my jigs because I'm night fishing. Because you guess what? That crawdad that is, you know, red or green or brown in the daytime, it doesn't just magically change into black with blue flake in night and nighttime. And I know it kind of goes against everything that you read, but definitely try it out because we've had a lot of success. So that's a jig. I'll typically go with a heavier wire jig, something that when I jack a big fish, I'm not worried about it bending out. Nighttime, you're not necessarily worried about fish seeing your line. So I typically throw braid to heavy leader or straight braid, depending on if I'm throwing top water or not. But braid to heavy mono leader is great. 20, 25, even 30 pound test because I want to be able to get those big fish to the boat. As far as worms, typically rig them two ways. Texas rigged or brass and glass. Uh, something with a little bit more sound to it. You know, a brass weight with a glass bead. It's just something that works at night, but typically stick with some kind of ribbon tail worm. And I'll link some of my favorites down below, but uh, that is a great way to definitely slow down and pick those rock piles or ledges or uh, river bends apart. As far as creature bait, brush hog, baby brush hog, game hog, something that's gonna have a little bit of more action. Uh, those are typically my three style finesse baits. So now that we've covered that, let's talk about reaction because this is my favorite category uh, when we're talking about summertime, nighttime fishing because a lot of people do not go out and throw big wake baits in pitch black, new moon. And I challenge you guys to do it because you will catch some of the biggest fish of the entire year, the entire summer doing it. So let's talk about top water. There is something that is very addicting well, we all know how addicting topwater fishing is, right? Seeing those big explosions, but hearing the explosions when you can't necessarily see, it adds a whole level of adrenaline to that bite. You don't know if it's a two incher, a two pounder, a 10 incher, a 10 pounder. You don't know what is blowing up on your bait. And when you're throwing a big bait like this, those big fish just come out and they eat. So let's talk about topwater. Typically, I throw one of like three different types of top waters. Now let's, the obvious is gonna be some kind of buzz bait. Now a lot of guys will throw a big double bladed buzz bait. Lots of commotion, lots of noise, lots of drawing power. Now the benefit of throwing a top water bait, something with commotion, is not only do the fish see it, but they also hear it. You know, when those fish are down, they're looking up, and they see that big double buzz coming. There's a big bubble trail. There's a big V, a big ripple in the water. It, it kind of guides those fish, lets them hone in to where your bait is. So that is the benefit of throwing a bait with a lot of commotion. But if you're throwing a bait or you're fishing clear water, there is some benefits to throwing a more subtle buzz bait. So typically guys will throw that big, loud clacker, double buzz, which is great for covering water and getting a lot of bites. But next time you're out throwing a buzz bait, try throwing a, a bait without a clacker. Try, try throwing a buzz bait with a plastic blade, something that's a little more subtle. I think you'll be surprised at the, the size of the fish you catch. And that will be applied kind of to all of this. You know, I don't like throwing, especially in clear water. You know, in muddy water, stained water, that's fine. You can throw something that's got a lot of a sound. It helps those fish, like I said, find that bait. But if you got three or four foot of visibility, you got clear water, you got bright moon, try something more subtle because those fish are gonna be more apt to eat that big bait. So, buzz baits, kinda of talked about those. That is what a lot of people throw and I've caught a lot of fish on it, it works. 
But next time that you're throwing a buzz bait, I want you to think about possibly throwing some kind of wake bait. Now the two different wake baits that I throw, one's gonna be lipped, one's gonna be not lipped. Typically, depending on the area that I'm fishing, if I'm fishing around heavy wood or grass, something like that, I'm gonna throw a lipped wake bait, wake bait because that's gonna kind of plow through the water and push that, that vegetation or come through that wood a little better than a non-lipped bait. The downside to the lipped bait is it's just one more thing in the way for that fish to come up and hit and get in the way of that hook. So when you can, go with a non-lipped bait. Also on wake baits, the, the reason I like to throw, like let's say this rat, it's got a really soft tail. You know, hard wake baits, or wake baits with hard tails, it's like, again, it's, a, it's another version of that lip, the front and the back, to get in the way of that fish. Now it's dark, these fish are using their ladder line, they're feeling the, these baits, if they can't see very well, they're going towards the commotion. A lot of times they'll hit and they'll miss, and that lip will get in the way, that hard tail will get in the way, uh, that is when you need to try a lipless wake bait. Now, this has a knocker in it. Again, I talked about being subtle and everything. There is a benefit to being subtle. These rat style baits are awesome. You know, a, a phenomenal bait. If you guys want to get, you know, some of these baits can be very expensive. If you guys want to get into the big wake bait fishing uh, rat scene, try the Spro Rat. It's not very expensive. In its category, it's very inexpensive. I think $20 or $30. Um, but some of these baits can get hundreds of dollars. But I, I mean, I've seen pictures this week of a couple 12 pounders that were caught on a rat night fishing. So, um, kind of broke down of when I choose a lipped or non lipped bait. But if you can get away with a, a non lipped bait, try the BBZ floater. This bait specifically, Matt turned me on to this bait many, many years ago, and it's got a subtle knocker in it. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But when this thing is going slow, it's up there on the surface. Now these fish, they're looking up, right? Doesn't matter how shallow they are, they're still looking up, and they're tracking that fish. All they're seeing is that V. Well, this bait is just barely moving. It's not a lot of commotion. It's not like a big double buzz, just barely moving. Looks real natural. Doesn't really matter what color, because all they're seeing is is the belly, right? If you can get away with a lipless wake bait, definitely give this a shot because you will catch the biggest fish of the entire summer. Something about big wake baits, it just draws out those big, big girls. Now, you will catch two pounders on this. You will catch five pounders on this, but you will also catch 12 pounders on this. So next time you're out and you're throwing a buzz bait, I want you to think about throwing a wake bait. Now there's great choices on the market. I will link those down below in the video description. You know, the Noisy Docks is a great bait, Johnny Rat, the Spro Rat. I will link all those down below in the video description because they are all great. Just understand when to throw a lift wake bait and when to throw a non-lift wake bait. Kind of talked about that. One other top water that I will throw, um, a lot of people probably don't throw at night, is a frog. Now let's talk water conditions. If it is windy, or muddy or stained, I will not throw a frog. But if it's that clear water, if it's full moon, it's bright out, better visibility, no wind, slick calm, try throwing a frog up shallow and you will be surprised with how shallow these fish get and the size of fish that are up there hunting. You know, these fish aren't, aren't stupid. These big fish, they've been around for a long time. They've seen so many baits. They've seen different conditions. Um, when you can throw a frog very subtle, you're just walking it very quietly, doesn't really make a lot of commotion, right? Those fish that are up shallow, they don't get spooked. You'll be surprised with what you can catch on a frog. Typically, I will throw some kind of a white belly frog. It just helps them kind of find it. Again, low light conditions, these fish have a harder time seeing it and being exact on their bite placement versus when it's bright and sunny outside and then they can see a long way. So a frog, if you guys haven't tried a frog, definitely try a frog. Another great alternative to a, a uh, uh, buzz bait is gonna be obviously the Whopper Plopper. Again, I throw this on straight braid, I'll upgrade the hooks, probably 3X, sometimes 4X hooks, depending on where I'm fishing. 
but the benefit of this is you can stop it and uh, pause it and it won't sink. So definitely try a whopper plopper if you like throwing uh, buzz baits as well. So that is top water. Now let's talk about subsurface baits because cranking or throwing a bladed jig or a chatter bait, a spinner bait can be a phenomenal way to catch a lot of fish. Now let's talk about uh, bladed jigs, spinner baits, and swim jigs all in the same category. When do you know what to throw or when do you know what to start out with? Uh, typically for me, it has to do with what is the main forage in the body of water I'm fishing? Is it shad? Is it big gizzard shad? Is it hitch? You know, what is the forage? And uh, typically if it is a shad lake or a smaller bait fish lake, I will start off with a spinner bait. If it is anything else, I will start off with a bladed jig, a chatter bait. Now, the benefits to each. Again, I don't typically throw a big, heavy, giant Colorado big spinner. Colorado blade spinner bait. It works, it really does, but understand that willow blades, Colorado blades, they have a completely different sound and feel in the water. Now, what we found is going out and throwing a willow blade spinner bait at night in a fishery that has the main forge is shad works so much better than a Colorado blade spinner bait. So if you like to throw a spinner bait at night, next time you're out fishing and you're night fishing and you know that you have shad as your main forge in your fishery, definitely try a, a willow blade spinner bait. Now I typically don't fish shallow. Um, square bills or anything like that. If I'm fishing shallow, I will throw the spinner bait or the bladed jig. Now you can get away with throwing heavier spinner baits and, and chatter baits down deep, but typically that's where I start, either the, the spinner bait or the chatter bait. Now last but not least is gonna be the swim jig. You know, you guys know that uh, we love throwing swim baits and night fishing is no different and the benefit of throwing this bait right here this is actually the california swim jig it's got a no jack hook in it you can throw this on straight 80 pound braid and stick a 10 pounder and you will not bend this hook out this is a bait we've preached about it for years this is a bait that matt designed several years ago um, for chasing the big california bass and uh, this thing has worked all over the country and this is by far our number one favorite color. This is actually called Citrus Shad, Tactical Shad, and some kind of bluegill or bream color are typically the colors I go with. Again, bright colors, clear water, natural colors, darker colors, darker water. Keep it simple, but ironically, these are my three favorite colors and they are the ones that are in stock right now at Tackle Warehouse. Citrus Shad is hands down our number. I don't know, I don't even know how many fish I've caught or netted over 10 pounds on this setup right here. Typically we, we run either a Kitek or a some kind of soft paddle swim bait, 4.8 size paddle tail swim bait behind it. But um, the benefit of throwing the swim jig is it's, it's that combination between throwing a, a swim bait and a, a heavy swim bait and, and a jig. You can fish it slow on the bottom if you want. You can fish it shallow quickly if you want. But the benefit of throwing this versus a swim bait is it has the skirt. Now you guys have heard us preach or talk about secondary action and what that is. When you're reeling this thing along and that tail's kicking, that skirt's kind of pulsating and you hit something or you give it a rod twitch, that whole skirt puffs out and flares out and gives uh, kind of that mimics uh, scale patterns of the, the bait fish and that is when you get your bite. So that swim jig adds, the, adds that secondary action to just that tail kick and you get so many more bites throwing that, especially at night. So that is bladed jigs, spinner baits, and swim jigs. Again, keep it simple with colors. As far as a chatter bait or a bladed jig, I will go with something natural unless it's real clear water and then I will go bright if I need to, some chartreuse or, or something like that 
white maybe. I typically start out with chartreuse and then I'll step down to white. Uh, now I will say, fishing with these two at night, you will get short struck a lot more on this guy right here. A lot of times those fish feel those blades turning and they'll come through and they hit, hit those blades. The benefit of throwing the chatterbait, that blade is in line, it's on the head of the bait, it's in line with the hook. When they come up and they hit that head, nine times out of 10, they get that big jig hook and you get them to the boat. So that is that. So now let's talk about cranking because I absolutely love cranking in the dark. Now it's something that a lot of people don't do but again, when those fish move up to those rock piles at night to feed, they are looking to feed. Those big girls, they're not as wary as they are in the daytime, and you can catch some of the biggest fish, again, of the summertime of your life cranking. Some of the best nights I've had out fishing at night were on a crankbait. Now typically, I will start, well, it all depends on depth, obviously, right? But I, I typically don't throw square bills. Again, if I'm fishing shallow, I'm throwing that, that chatterbait or spinnerbait swim jig. I typically don't throw a square bill. Um, I typically throw deeper crankbaits. Starting out, I will throw a 10X, 10XD. And you guys have heard us in the past talk about chartreuse being a phenomenal color at night. Now, most people will tell you to throw black and blue again, but it just try throwing a chartreuse crankbait. Again, 10XD gets down, real wide thump, real heavy action, and those fish eat it. 10XD gets down 18 to 22 feet of water. If you guys like nighttime fishing, summertime fishing in the dark, and you're typically throwing a worm or a jig on that rock pile, and that rock pile is in that depth range, that 18 to 22 foot, foot definitely try a 10XD. If it's a little shallower, Go with a 6XD, a DD22, a Norman DD22. Uh, one of my best nights ever cranking at night, I was throwing a DD22 and just messed them up on Clear Lake. And then also our crank as well if you want that 12 to 15 foot range. But uh, crank him, burn it fast, pause just like we do nine times out of 10. Burn, 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 pause. You hit that rock pile, you hit that structure, whatever it may be pause and those fish will come unglued. Now colors, again, sharp, start with chartreuse, start with your brighter colors. If it's clear water, moon is bright, as it gets darker, stained water, go with some kind of, of darker contrasty color, either some kind of a red craw or, or spring craw, something like that. But that is summertime night fishing. These baits right here, if I was to go out right now, not right now, I was gonna go out tonight, when it was dark, these are the baits that I'm gonna have tied on. Some kind of wake bait, some kind of crank bait, bladed jig, swim jig, and then both worm and jig, or worm, creature bait, jig, creature bait, one of those combinations uh, you will find when you go out and you fish, getting back on the, these uh, finesse baits, these bottom contact baits, uh, you will find that they will be eating one so much better than the other and I don't know why, but definitely try them. If you're throwing the worm and you're not getting bit, switch up to the jig. If you're throwing the jig and not getting bit, switch up to the creature bait and switch them all out because you will find on that night they're eating one of those baits so much better than the other. Again, I don't know why, but it's just how it worked. But summertime fishing, as that sun goes down, the activity of the lake gets so much better and, and it, it has to do with boat traffic, it has to do with those fish feeling secure and safe. They get up and they hunt. They use that light, they use the moon to get up shallow and they are looking to feed. They move up to those rock piles. It is go time. When there isn't anybody else on the lake and you are willing to stay out late, check your moon phases, stay out late, be safe about it, stay out late, throw these baits, you guys will catch more fish and have so much more luck. You know, sometimes summertime, the dog days of summer, it sucks. It's hot, you get sunburnt, you're all sweaty, the fishing is tough. You know, in the morning time, we, we did a, a video about it a few weeks ago, you get out first light and the, the fishing's awesome, but come 10.30, 11, noon, it just sucks. Well, guess what? 10.30, 11, midnight, one, 
2 a.m. in the night, in the morning, it's go time. Those fish are wanting to feed. If they're not doing the daytime, your bite sucks on your fishery, try flip-flopping and going at night, and you will be surprised at what is up there eating and what you're catching. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the, the comment section. I will link all these baits down below in the video description, colors, how to rig them, all that sort of stuff down below. But I challenge you guys, don't just go out and throw a worm. Yes, it works. Don't just go out and throw a Colorado black spinnerbait. Yes, it works, but try these other baits. You guys will be surprised at what you will catch this summer. As always, guys, if you learned something, please like, subscribe to our channel. We do three videos a week for you, teaching you guys how to catch more bass. We appreciate you. Have a good one.